Welcome back. America's mayors are sounding the alarm about this country's growing mental health crisis. The issue of mental health cuts across all demographics and has been exacerbated by the COVID-19 global pandemic. According to a survey of cities conducted by the U.S. Conference of Mayors, 97% say requests for mental health services have increased over the last two years. 88% say they do not have adequate access to mental health resources. And 82% have developed new initiatives to address the need for mental health services. Joining me now on set is Reno's mayor and the president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors, Hillary Sheevey, who has made addressing the mental health crisis a priority of her presidency with the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Mayor, thank you so much for being here. And this is such an important topic, so I'm, I'm so glad that we've got the chance to talk about it. From your perspective, what's the biggest challenge in dealing with and addressing mental health issues here? Is it awareness? Is it a funding issue? Worker shortages? Where, yeah. Where's the biggest problem? Well, actually, it's all of that. That's what's so hard about tackling this crisis. And I've been with mayors all week long on the Hill addressing our representatives, letting them know that we truly believe this is the number one crisis in, in our cities, uh, mental health and addiction. And it's very, very complex, but we shouldn't have to have our loved ones arrested to get mental health help. And that's mm -hmm. what's happening. Lack of access, lack of health care workers, lack of transparency. It's not just one thing, but the infrastructure is incredibly broken. The policies we've been making have been failing dramatically. I think there's a big myth out there that there's a place to take those who yeah. are severely mentally ill. Mm -hmm. And actually, there's not. And even if they're seen in our ERs, they're just right throughout the, this revolving door that we've seen. And we've allowed them to die on our streets. Right. And it's incredibly inhumane. We, and I think the other myth is people believe there is some place to take them. We right. do not have the infrastructure in place. And usually that is through our states. And I've been working with my state for six years to get a crisis center, a 24-7 crisis center, because right. mental health issues are not 9 to 5. Right. And cities are 24-7. So we need help now. We need better infrastructure in place. We need better health care workers. And we're in trouble because we know we're going to lose health care workers. And talk to me a little bit about this effort that you've made to open these community crisis centers. Yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking, listening to you talk about it, yeah. the, the resources needed to staff something 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You need professionals that have the licenses and all the skills to handle this. I would yes. imagine that's a very expensive endeavor. Absolutely. And it's kind of interesting. Mayor Dyer from Fresno, he, he's a really great mayor, but he's also a previous police chief. Mm -hmm. And we were all talking as mayors the other day, and he said, you know, I remember in the 90s, whenever Bill Clinton said, you know, we're seeing such high rates of crime in the 90s and said, we need 100,000 police officers. Well, mayors are now going to be saying, we need 100,000 uh, mental health clinicians mm -hmm. in our cities. Yeah. And But we have to figure out how do we attract and uh, maintain those workers, Because right? it's not an easy job, right? No, yeah. and we're going to be losing a lot of health care workers because we saw during COVID-19 mm -hmm. there was so much burnout. Mm -hmm. So this is another reason why mayors are on the Hill. Um, it's very, very bi bipartisan. Mm -hmm. I took a Democratic mayors and Republican mayors, and I'm a nonpartisan mayor, right, right. and let them know that this is not um, a political issue. This is a people issue. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we continue to treat, um, you know, mental health in our ERs where we fix broken bones, yeah. not broken bra brains. Right. And so it's a true, true crisis in, in this country and something that we've neglected for far too long. And, and you you know, have talked at length about the lobbying effort that you and your fellow mayors are doing here in Washington on Capitol Hill. Do you think that the Biden administration should declare a mental health crisis, uh, calling it a U.S. national emergency? I mean, that would unlock some federal resources to, to tackle a problem like this. Well, I absolutely think that mayors are looking at this. And like I said, we believe it's the number one crisis in our cities mm -hmm. across America. And if you look at that survey that you were referencing, mm -hmm. 90% of cities are saying they don't have the resources and people are dying on our streets. You know, I always tell like the story about, you know, there's a man lying on the ground and he's screaming and yelling and we run over and we say, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? He's holding his side. Well, what do we do? We take him to the hospital and they say it's appendicitis. We're going to operate on you. The next week, there's the same man lying on, on our streets and we run over there and say, what's wrong with you? And, you know, he's suffering from bipolar and schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. And what do we do? We walk over them. Yeah, right. It's horrific. Yeah. And, and you've pointed to this. Your, your uh, conference has put together this survey of 117 cities. And, and there's, it's remarkable how many things can be attributed to mental health uh, problems. Substance abuse, COVID-19, homelessness. 
economic concerns, unemployment. This it covers a wide range of problems you're dealing. Huge, absolutely, and obviously the fentanyl crisis. We really believe that's a weapon of mass destruction, mm -hmm. and knowing that it could kill hundreds of thousands of people, we need to make sure that we're prepared as if we were going to war. I mean, that is really true. Um, we're, the drug crisis is really severe because those drugs are so strong now. And so I'm, we're always talking about we need to get in our s schools early and often and talk about the dangers of one pill kills yeah. with fentanyl. There's a lot we could be doing to be proactive, mm -hmm. but we also have to give the cities the power to do that. We're 24 seven mayors um, hit the ground running. Yeah. We know how to get it done. And we're asking the states to give us that power to do that because yeah. a lot of that funding goes to states. And like I said, I've been trying to get my center open for six years, right. and it's been incredibly challenging. Now, you obviously come to this uh, as a mayor who has care for all the people in your city, but you've also had your own personal struggles yeah. with mental health issues. Uh, you wrote an op-ed in the Reno Gazette Journal where you said that we can't afford to put off conversations about mental health. You talked about how you're the mayor of the city, a, a prominent yeah. person in town. And it was difficult for you to even get an appointment to have your concerns addressed. Right. I, a couple of years ago, I lost uh, my sister to mental illness and my brother to addiction and my brother-in-law to addiction and all at once. And I was struggling and having tr a tremendous amount of grief. And so I was calling out for help. And, and I have great insurance. If anyone knows, um, it's very hard to treat you know, grief and depression and those things if you don't have insurance. But even if you have insurance, right. it's really difficult. So that shouldn't be the case. But I come to find out it would take six or eight weeks. People would say, oh, I could get you in. And certainly I didn't tell them I was the mayor. Right. You know, again, yeah. the yeah. stigma, unfortunately. Yeah. Right. And that's changed a lot because what I decided after I learned that experience, I couldn't even get help. Yeah. Is it that, didn't matter that you were the mayor. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's what I always say. Yeah. It doesn't matter. If your mayor isn't talking about it, who is? If your mayor can't get help, who can? Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's why mayors are really standing up and, you know, making such a big plea for mental health. So quickly, before we go, I mean, you dealt with this. If there's somebody watching us right now who's struggling and doesn't know where to turn, what, what, what would be your best advice for that? Yeah, well, I know that's going to sound crazy, but mayor's offices were really, really resourceful, mm -hmm. very resourceful. So I would. I would reach out to your mayor. We're very accessible. Email them. Also call 988 number if you're really, really struggling. Mm -hmm. But I'd also say have hope. And what I mean by that is we know that hopelessness can lead to excessive amounts of depression and is a predictor of suicide. So have hope. And um, you have to, you know, always have hope because that's where we see lots of hopelessness and to tragedy. And so um, there is there is hope out there. I promise you that. But reach out to um, your local governments are actually probably a great place. But the 988 number, right. we can't stress that enough. All right, Mayor, uh, from the biggest little city in the world, right? Is that yes? And how do you pronounce Nevada? Nevada. Did yeah, right? you got it right. Got it. All right, good job. Thank you for so, being here. Thanks Mayor, for having and Good me. luck with this effort. Thanks we so much. You being here. And as the mayor just said, if you know anyone who is dealing with emotional distress, having a suicidal crisis, needs to be connected to resources, the number she just talked about, 988 for immediate support. Again, that's 988. Help is just a call or text away. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.